subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In this long and uncertain pandemic, there is finally a glimmer of hope that we might get a vaccine sooner rather than later. In this episode, we're going to be talking about two recent findings, one from a vaccine that was tested in Oxford and one from a vaccine that was tested in Wuhan, both of which have elicited a very good immune response from participants. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. In yesterday's episode of Human Challenge Trials, we discussed how there was a rumor that we can expect positive findings from the Oxford vaccine trials and that has happened. The safety results from a phase 1 clinical trial for the Oxford vaccine called the CHAD OX1 and COVID-19 were released in the journal Lancet on Monday. The results indicate that both antibodies and T-cells were produced by the immune system among the participants who received the vaccine. Now, we've seen in detail about antibodies and T-cells in other videos before. Antibodies help neutralize the virus in our bodies and T-cells perform a variety of functions, including coordinating immune system response as well as destroying infected cells. The antibody responses improved after some participants received a booster dose as well. And the Oxford study was conducted on 1077 people. Now also published in The Lancet were results from another vaccine trial in Wuhan. The biotech firm CanSino's vaccine phase 2 trials took place with 508 participants and this trial also showed neutralizing antibodies being produced with just a single dose and a similar T-cell response as well. Both trials used an adenovirus, which is a common cold-causing virus. They were both randomized and blinded with enough number of participants for the study's results to be statistically significant. Let's take a quick look at how these two studies were designed and what they found. The Oxford vaccine was tested on 1077 patients who were randomized into two arms. The vaccine arm comprised of 543 participants and they received the actual vaccine while the control group which had 534 participants, received a licensed meningitis vaccine as placebo. There were 10 more people from the vaccine group who received booster shots after 28 days. The vaccine induced a T-cell response within 14 days of vaccination and then an antibody response within 28 days of vaccination. The antibodies peaked, reached their highest concentrations at 28 days and their levels remained high until 56 days after vaccination. The booster shot also improved antibody levels. The CanSino vaccine was tested on 508 participants who were randomized into three groups. There was a group of participants who received just a single dose, there was another group that got half the dose and then there was the placebo arm. The arms had 253, 129 and 126 participants respectively. The placebo arm was given a vaccine with no active ingredient or virus in it. This vaccine too induced similar T-cell and antibody responses. In 28 days, both doses, half dose and a full dose of the Wuhan vaccine had induced significant neutralizing antibodies. Now, in both the Oxford trial and the Wuhan trial, the participants were 50% male and 50% female. The Oxford participants had an average age of 35 and were primarily white, while the Chinese Wuhan participants had an average age of 40. Both studies were randomized and controlled, which meant that the groups that were being studied were approximately alike in each trial so that the effects can be judged and the effects can also be compared between the group that received the vaccine and one that did not. The Oxford study was single-blinded, which meant that the participants receiving the vaccine do not know what vaccine they were getting, whether it was the real vaccine or placebo, but the person administering the vaccine would know. The Wuhan study was double-blinded, which meant both the participant as well as the person administering the vaccine does not know what vaccine and what dosage they administered. 
A double blinded study typically removes bias more effectively. Now, a very important bit of good news is that neither vaccine produced any serious side effects. Both did produce mild to moderate side effects. Some common reactions were muscle ache, fatigue, headache, chills, and even fever. However, the incidence of these mild side effects was quite high in the Oxford vaccine. Almost 70% of the participants who received the vaccine did end up developing mild symptoms. Naturally, there is concern about the number of people who developed these milder side effects, but the team does describe that none of these symptoms were unmanageable by standard paracetamol and most of them in fact resolved naturally. Paracetamol was also given in the Oxford study as prophylaxis before some participants were administered the vaccine and the side effects were much lower in the participants who had already received paracetamol. The CanSino vaccine had mild to moderate side effects as well with the strongest dosage, the full dose, resulting in a high fever. But this occurred in less than 10% of the participants and the fever also resolved naturally over the course of 72 to about 96 hours. So now, what is next? The findings are still preliminary, they are still phase 1 findings and phase 2 findings and we need large-scale follow-up trials that are conducted on large numbers of people. The Oxford vaccine is already undergoing phase 2, phase 3 trials with over 15,000 participants already enrolled in UK, Brazil and South Africa. The trials actually commenced based on past safety of the adenovirus that was used in the vaccine, which was also used during vaccine developmental efforts for the MERS virus. And therefore, its safety was established. The CanSino vaccine generated positive safety results from phase one trials in May and has even been approved for use by the Chinese military for one year. These findings were from a phase 2 trial and the vaccine still requires a large phase 3 trial. Both vaccines are viral vector vaccines where the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is inserted into a common cold causing adenovirus. The adenovirus used in the Oxford vaccine infects chimpanzees and it's called CHADOX1, while the one used by the Wuhan researchers is a human adenovirus called the AD5. The adenoviruses are genetically modified to not replicate inside our bodies and cause infection and thus the vaccine works only for the spike protein of the novel coronavirus. The Oxford vaccine will be manufactured by both AstraZeneca as well as Serum Institute of India, both of whom have already started production in an effort to not delay in case the vaccine works and is ready. The Pune-based Serum Institute is in fact the largest vaccine manufacturer in the world and the institute has consistently focused on delivering vaccines to the poorest of poor without price gouging. All in all, it's still very early to tell, but at least there is something to look forward to when it comes to finally having a vaccine against this coronavirus. Thank you for watching this video.